from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell and I'm in Melbourne, still following and commentating on the Ashes series, but doing it off tube from studio just because of the COVID rates in and around the Ashes series, a lot of COVID positive tests amongst broadcast media. I've managed to steer clear of it so far, so crossing fingers and hope that it stays that way. But, well, the series 3-0, the Ashes are gone, but England march on trying to get something out of the remaining two matches. Well, we've had a bit of sustenance here in Sydney. It's Jim Maxwell in the ABC box at the SCG. And England have fought pretty well so far in this game. Now it's a question of what their batsmen can do against the Australian bowling. And the only other factor that's uh, likely to disrupt this match is, of course, the fickle weather of Sydney. This is the wettest test match venue in Australia, as we saw on the first day. Less on the second day, maybe no more in this match. Well, there's a little bit of weather in Joburg as well, where India are uh, now going through their second test against South Africa. And that's very delicately poised. But uh, hello, everybody. I'm Charu Sharma for All India Radio. Having returned to Bangalore after a quick trip to Coorg, where on our copy of state, it's time for picking. So uh, it'll require a few more trips. But a terrific series in South Africa, unlike the one that is going on in Australia. We're going to have time to look at both those series. But I tell you what, we have to start by reflecting on what has been one of Test Cricket's greatest upsets. There's a lot of very good Test Cricket going on around at the moment, but I don't think anybody predicted this result, which was Bangladesh's men shocking the cricket world in quite a wonderful way, beating the reigning World Test Champions at New Zealand in their own backyard. The first time Bangladesh have beaten New Zealand in any form of cricket. And they won by eight wickets in the opening Test at Mount Manganui. Quite an achievement. And other than victories over Zimbabwe, it's Bangladesh's first test victory since 2018 when they beat the West Indies. Added to that, it's the first test that New Zealand have lost at home since March 2017 when they lost out to South Africa. But it's fair to say Bangladesh thoroughly enjoyed their dressing room celebration with what is an iconic team song. Do check that out on social media if you can. Well, how has this victory gone down back in Bangladesh? I'm pleased to say that we are joined by former Bangladesh opener, Sharia Nafis. Sharia, tell us more about these celebrations. It's a massive, it's a brilliant win. First of all, um, thanks to Allah for uh, granting us uh, to win the match. Secondly, all credit goes to the players who they have fought hard. They have uh, played brilliant cricket for five days and won the match for Bangladesh. Um, for me, this is the best, uh, this is the biggest win uh, for Bangladesh cricket team uh, for quite a few reasons. First of all, we have been a strong side at home. We have winning. We have been winning tests, one day T20s at home. Uh, in one day cricket, yes, we have some success, but, you know, as a test playing nation, uh, it has to be the ultimate game. You have to win test matches. Home, yes, in our home condition, we have utilized home condition very well, but when we were going away, we were not doing that great. And uh, recently, in uh, just two, three, four months, Bangladesh team has uh, been uh, has gone through a lot of criticism, uh, especially for the T20 World Cup. In this context, you go to New Zealand, uh, where they have been unbeaten for five years, 17 test matches, World Test Champion. You go to their back, uh, backyard, four, fa four fast bowlers. So it shows New Zealand knew the condition is going to help them. You dominate the game for five days. You back out bet them, you out bowl them, you outfield them, win the test match. I think nothing can get better than that. And we are really proud. Well, congratulations once again, uh, Sharia. This is Charu Sharma from Bangalore. Uh, you know, I'm very fond of uh, Bangladesh cricket. And I, you know, I can only imagine what's going through the whole nation. But let's talk about the next, perhaps the next big star on the horizon, Ibadat Hussain. Now, he got, what, seven for 121. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a very proud Air Force man, made his debut a short while back. Are we talking about the next big star? Is he is he an inspirational figure? I'm sure you know him well. You know, Ibadat has been playing test matches for Bangladesh for the last two years, uh, but he to, he took a lot of criticism in in like recent uh, past that he was not picking enough wickets, uh, whether he should be playing or not. There was a lot of debate going on, but uh, you know, this guy he has pace. Uh, Ibadat can bowl 140 plus. 
all day long so that was his um, that was his uh, plus point and i'm uh, very glad that he has bowled into the right areas the coaches has put a lot of effort behind him and <clears throat> when you pull performance like that it will uh, as he said in his interview we came here we had a mission and we wanted to uh, motivate the next generation my word the way he has motivated the next uh, uh, next batch of players that's uh, it it cannot get better than that Sharia, thank you so much for joining us on Stump. That's Sharia Nafis, former Bangladesh opener, reveling in their victory over New Zealand. Now, next on Stumped, the men's ashes at the SCG. But sure enough, the weather did take a lot of time out on the first day before Australia declared late on the second at eight for 416. And the openers for England survived just to the close to go into day three. Over the day, day two was marked by an absolutely heartwarming hundred from Australia's Usman Khawaja, a man Jim only drafted back into the side due to the fact that Travis Head, uh, the incumbent number five, tested positive for COVID. So yet another Australian who has taken an opportunity immediately. Well, he's 35. It's uh, three years since he scored a hundred for Australia. It's three years since he played for Australia during that Ashes series in 2019. And it was between Travis Head and Usman Khawaja for the spot for the first test, OK? Head got a head start, made 100. Uh, the interesting thing now that Khawaja's done what he's done and, and, and done it in a very cool, calm way, what happens next? Does he stay in the side? Do they, in fact, drop Cameron Green, who hasn't come up as a batsman, although he's bowled quite well, um, they've got a few decisions to make, just as they've had to make around their bowling attack, uh, where you know, Bolden finds himself, Scott Bolden, in the team, despite the fact that it looked like Hazelwood would come back and Richardson around. So you can say there's a there's a rosy side to all this because the the depth with batting and, and bowling is such that uh, Australia's appears to be in good shape. But good on Usman Khawaja. He's ninth test century, so that's quite a record. Now, as much as the Ashes has been hitting the headlines in recent weeks, there is a very significant test series taking place in South Africa as well, with the second test against India climaxing in, in rather an intriguing way. And uh, at the time of speaking right now, South Africa going to the fourth day, needing 122 to win. Uh, that second test in Johannesburg and level the series, whilst India need eight wickets to win. So it's tantalisingly set up, Charu. Now, India are without Virat Kohli. Their captain was ruled out with a back spasm. So K.O. Rahul's a stand-in skipper, top scoring. Uh, he got 50 when they were bowled out for 202. But South Africa struggled with the bat as well. They only got a 27-run lead uh, into the second innings when they were bowled out for 229. And what about Shardul Thakur? He got seven oh. for 61. Best figures by an Indian bowler in South Africa and joint best by any overseas bowler over there. I mean, he's just been fabulous, hasn't he? Brilliant. Tarzan can do no wrong, not just with the <laughs> ball, but with the bat too. He, he went out, he was pretty aggressive, made a big difference for that little cameo of his. So his confidence is fabulous. And to think that he can't get a regular place in the Indian side is, is uh, you know, the mind boggles. It's just nice to have that, uh, you know, somebody who can step in as a genuine all-rounder. And, and he's a hard-boiled cricketer, came up the hard way in Mumbai. And, and uh, I don't think he's going to take his success, you know, wrongly, as it were. I mean, he's also not particularly young. So he's got a nice, solid cricketing mind uh, on his shoulder, a brain. And uh, one feels happy for him because had he failed here in bowling conditions... He might not have become somebody you talk about a regular place in the Indian cricket team. Now, perhaps it'll be very difficult to leave him, uh, at least out of the, the top 15, 18 players in the country. Finally on Stumped, we'll go from one ashes to another as we head over to the volcanic island of Iceland and the aptly named Volcanic Ashes. Now, this is a competition which is back after a year, a year of absence due to the coronavirus pandemic. It's an indoor winter tournament with the teams competing for a very special prize. To tell us more about it, we can welcome the chair of the Icelandic Cricket Association, Bala Kamalakaran, to Stumped. Bala, welcome. Tell us a little bit more about the background to this Volcanic Ashes. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, not always we get to hear about cricket in Iceland, but... Uh... <laughs> We're trying to we're trying to make that happen. Um, I mean, just to give a little bit of a background, um, Iceland. Um, of course, we have a history that Iceland has played cricket long time back in the year 911. We have record of it from the sagas, 
but uh, it was a ragtag group of us who started playing uh, about 10 years back. And then now uh, we have a very strong uh, buildup. Uh, the volcanic ashes uh, started uh, uh, about two, three years ago when we uh, had enough teams to, to play the, the sport. Uh, now we have over uh, four teams uh, locally and uh, we have three tournaments. And uh, it's been it's been wonderful to see uh, see the development of the sport, and of course we are just in the first mile of a marathon, and we are building a lot of things around it, a youth program, uh, women's cricket, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, for the first time we can actually see uh, right in front of our eyes how a sport is built in a country, and uh, Iceland always uh, seems to be the right place to start some things like that. So the tournament is called the Volcanic Ashes. Describe what the trophy looks like for us. Mm. Well, actually, uh, we do have uh, the, um, the the new volcano that just came out <laughs> uh, about uh, a year back, and we have uh, we have we're probably the only country where we can get new ash every time we play the tournament. <laughs> so you've got real uh, ash. What, 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 what yeah, we we, we actually we actually went to the volcanic site and we actually do have a, a remnant of uh, of a volcano and and uh, that is what is uh, uh, given out as a trophy. I like it. I mean, there's a lot of fancy cricket trophies around the world. I particularly <laughs> like that one. No, Jim. no, no. You know, you don't get much fancier than this because uh, it's how <laughs> nature made it. <laughs> Bella, hello. It's Jim Maxwell in in Sydney. Uh, I've just, been to Iceland and it's a pretty short summer from recollection. So tell us a bit more about the cricket scene in Iceland. Have you had much interest from the locals wanting to play the game? Um, I mean, uh, yes, uh, the, the, the summer season in Iceland is about four and a half months. But we have the advantage of uh, 24 hour lighting. So we get to play a lot longer during the day. So we don't stop uh, from uh, nine to uh, five. We usually play from nine to nine, so that's uh, that's you know that's uh, that kind of is like uh, maybe another month you could add to the season. Um, uh, the Iceland sport has been uh, getting a lot more popular in Iceland, primarily because uh, one we have a lot more expats who have moved into Iceland. Uh, a lot of new industries that are being built where um, people from uh, India, from South Africa, from uh, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan have uh, moved in. Uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, a number of refugees who have moved in from Afghanistan and other wash African areas who are cricketers. And we actually see this as a cricket as a very good platform to integrate some of those people into uh, the Icelandic uh, community because they get to uh, participate in a sport for, with those of us who have been here long enough and they get connections and networks as well. So uh, the sport is getting a lot more popular. We now have a dedicated uh, home of cricket. Uh, we play in uh, Vidastatun, which is uh, a ground in, in a town of Hafnafjordur. Uh, the prime minister of Iceland came and inaugurated the ground and, and we play there and we are building infrastructure. And while we play, uh, we start to see uh, curious Icelanders stop by while they're walking and they start asking what this is. Uh, and of course, uh, Icelanders are uh, quite well uh, worldly. They've traveled a lot. They've been to Australia. A lot of my friends actually have watched cricket in Australia. And uh, they, they're they really fondly looking for us to start uh, the tradition of uh, a barbecue and uh, drinking <laughs> beer and watching the sport. So, so those are some of the plans that we have uh, as we build the sport in Iceland. Well, I look forward to come to Iceland to talk some cricket, but I, I can only anticipate that for commentators, there are going to be some new challenges in terms of pronunciations. But talk uh, about the biggest <laughs> challenge here, Bala. I, 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 you know, you talk about 50, 100 people, 1,000, they're big numbers for a small country. But to be able to get a recognition or, or should we say international status from the ICC, I can't even begin to understand what a big challenge that must be for you. If it is, of course, right. one of the things you're looking forward to. 
Absolutely. We are, uh, we want Iceland to become a cricket playing nation. Uh, our big uh, vision document that we wrote down was in the next 10 years, Iceland will uh, be competing in the international stage. And I think that is a very doable uh, challenge. Of course, it's not a insurmountable, it is, it is an insurmountable challenge, but you know, as they say, you know, all, all, all things look impossible unless it's done. So, uh, so we've started on that journey and uh, the big challenge uh, initially when we started was just enough people, uh, you know, just having more people to play the sport. And uh, we have solved that problem now and now we're starting to build up infrastructure. Now we have a home for cricket. So we're starting to build some of the things that we need to have, you know, basic stuff, you know, uh, proper pitches, uh, you know, uh, obviously we have regular games now that uh, changes everything and uh, we're getting a lot of support from the local uh, community and uh, last but not least end of the day uh, it's all comes down to resources and uh, we are we we actually solved that problem last year we got the first corporate sponsor uh, a very big biotech company in iceland called alvertech has uh, sponsored one of the teams and uh, a number of the players that have joined us are uh, from that uh, company. So we are actually looking to get more corporates involved in the sport of cricket in Iceland. It's new for Iceland, but uh, as, as you uh, know, nobody expected Iceland to do anything in the game of football. But, uh, you know, they proved uh, a lot of people wrong in the last couple of years. Uh, and I think um, uh, size usually doesn't matter. What really matters is the 11 players on the field and uh, what they do on the field. And uh, I think we have a pretty good chance to, you know, build a kind of an underdog team that can actually go and stand its own in any place. It's fascinating to speak to you and, and hear the story. Thank you for sharing it with us. And let's hope any bad weather stays away from the volcanic ashes and, and you can complete it all. Thanks so much for being with us on Stump. Thanks so much. Uh, nice meeting you all. And, uh, you know, and as we say from Iceland, you know, you've seen nothing yet. Well, that's all we've got time for on this week's Stumped here on All India Radio. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter. We're at BBC WS Sport. Make sure you use the hashtag BBC Stumped. And check us out on YouTube as well. Go to BBC World Service on YouTube. My thanks to Cherry Sharma and Jim Maxwell and to you for listening. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. From the BBC World Service, in association with ABC and All India Radio, this is Stumped.